Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make Motion Blur actually bearable on your system in DaVinci Resolve. I'm talking about 10 times the speed increase. Okay, don't quote me on that number, I just made it up, but let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so first and foremost, if you even don't know how to turn on Motion Blur, you need to go into your node that actually makes the thing move and go into the settings tab instead of the controls tab. And down here, you will find Motion Blur. If you have multiple transforms, like for example, if I added another transform over here, you don't need to turn on Motion Blur in all of them. Basically transforms and all of the other effects that cause your objects to move or to do different behaviors that actually simulate motion blur kind of chain into each other. So if you have two transforms right next to each other or if you have a transform then a merge and then a transform it kind of goes in one line and you can just enable motion blur in the very last one. But make sure they're in one line and not separated by something else. Like for example if I had a transform then a merge that would be fine. But as soon as I added something like a blur let's say that would break the line and you would need to actually enable the motion blur on both of these transforms. Okay but let's get to the main tech that I wanted to show you in this video. And it's actually pretty simple. I haven't thought of it myself. I watched some tutorials online and they just showed it off casually and I never thought of this. You can actually keyframe the motion blur to be turned on and off. That means if I turn off my little loop that I have going on over here, my ball just moves for the first 60 frames and then it stands still. So motion blur doesn't have to be on over here and it's just as simple as I always do it just one frame before the 60, that means at frame 59, I like to click the keyframe button over here so that motion blur is on all of the time that the object is actually moving. And then on frame 60, where the animation itself actually ends, I like to just click again and then just turn off motion blur. As you can see in the graph, you can see a state change from going from one, which is turned on, to zero, which is turned off. And as you can see, the motion blur still happens over here. You can clearly see it here. And then when it stays still, it's turned off and it doesn't require extra resources for your computer. This is awesome at all, but it's especially useful when you're using a keyframe stretcher. A keyframe stretcher, if you don't know, is basically used if you have some sort of animation that goes at the beginning and then at the end and you want to stretch the in-between part so that you can kind of customize on the edit page over here, you can customize the length of the actual clip. Let's go into the fusion page and as you can see, my transform is just this opening animation. It doesn't really have the animation back. So I will go to, for example, frame 100 over here, just click on, let's do another keyframe and now move 60 frames forward because I moved 60 before. And let's go back to the starting point that I had right here. It doesn't matter that it's not exact. Now I just want to go to my dis displacement. I want to show my graph and as you can see this is the first graph and this is the last graph of the motion. So I'm just going to highlight this. I'm going to make this really smooth. If you don't know what I'm doing here, I explained it in my last video, you can find it somewhere over here, but let's get to the subject. So after I made this animation, as you can see, now it goes to the right and then stays there and goes back to the left. But for the rest of the clip, it pretty much does nothing. So it doesn't matter if the clip is this long or this, it still has the same animation that we have right here. So in order to actually make this work, I'm just going to add a keyframe stretcher. And the keyframe stretcher works super simply. Basically, you do the first frame of your animation, that means frame number zero for us, and the last frame is going to be the last keyframe that we have over here. So our last keyframe is at frame 160. So I'm just going to type in 160, hit OK. And now the stretch start and stretch end are basically the points where your object doesn't move in the middle. That means when I look at my transform, it doesn't move between frame 60 and 100. So I'm just going to type those in frame 60 and frame 100. Now that I set it up correctly, you may notice that our circle is still on the right and it's going to be there for the rest of the clip until the very end where these keyframes are not doing anything now, you can see that there's some sort of movement that's the movement that we programmed basically with the keyframes. You can see that our circle actually starts moving at the end and this movement is now going to be responsive depending on the clip length. So if I make it way longer on the timeline, you can see that the circle teleported to the right. So at the beginning, it's just going to go to the right. In the middle, it's not going to do much. And at the very end, it's going to go back to the left. Okay, so let's now go to our main subject, motion blur. So 
with our clip selected, let's go back to our fusion page, click on the transform node, and now at frame 100, we want to just make a keyframe on motion blur set to zero. Now, at frame 101, we want to turn it on again. And this is because the graphs are kind of finicky, and I found this is pretty much the best way to do it. Now that we have set up this, it should now work 100% of the time. This little keyframe over here that we have at 100 is still going to be affected by the keyframe stretcher that we have down here. When I zoom it in, you can see that the transform clearly goes into the keyframe stretcher. That means it's going to be affected by the timing difference. So as we scroll to the very end, you can see that our circle is still being affected by that motion blur. And if you aren't sure that, oh, I just turned it on over here, so it's constantly on during the whole animation, of course, it's going to be turned on here, you can just make sure by going to the very end of the animation and clicking a keyframe, then going a frame to the future, and now turn it off. And as you can see, for the rest of the animation, it's now going to be turned off. But again, the keyframe stretcher is just moving this whole part to the very end. So when I scroll over it, you can see that the motion blur is still being applied. So this is how you can optimize your motion blur in order to get faster renders. Hope this helps, and I will see you in the next one.